Hi, it's Dr. Joe Markovich, the anti-aging doctor. I want to tell you about some of the people that came behind me, and uh, I wish I'd known them. It's Memorial Day, and uh, actually Monday is, and I want to talk about Jack Shavigny. And if I've got time, I'll talk about uh, Hercules Borealis. Uh, Jack Shavigny went to my high school, and I didn't find this out till later. Jack Shavigny was one of the greatest football players that ever went to my high school. It was Hammond High School in Hammond, Indiana, which was kind of a famous high school for that area. The teachers were amazing, and the families and kids were just amazing. It was a huge melting pot. Anyway, Jack Shavigny was this guy's a great, great athlete, most valuable. Went to Notre Dame. Went to Notre Dame and played for Newt Rockney, Jack Shavigny. And even more famous, if anyone has ever heard of George Gipp, do it for the Gipper. Well, Newt Rockney, during the Army game, comes in halftime, and the Army was ahead 6 nothing, and comes in and gives this inspiration, the most inspirational speech, famous speech ever. Go in there and do it for the Gipper, because the Gipper was dying. Um, he had tuberculosis, and he was a dying man. He was a great athlete. The Gipper, I, I believe, was from Wisconsin, but he may have been from Michigan. I have to look that up. <clears throat> great athlete. But anyway, the Gipper was dying. J uh, Newt gives the speech. Jack Shavigny gets inspired. Goes out in the second half. Scores the tying touchdown. And as he goes over the line, this is the legend, there's one for the Gipper. Think about that. My high school, this guy, amazing man, Jack Shavigny, went over the line, said there's one for the giver. What a beautiful thing. Even if it's not true, but it is. Jack Shavigny went to my high school, went to Notre Dame, graduated from Notre Dame, went to Texas and was teaching there, coaching, and ended up coaching for Texas, University of Texas. And his greatest accomplishment in college football was when he beat Notre Dame his uh, second year at Texas. He beat Notre Dame, and uh, it was like 7-6 to six he won. And he got a pen. I don't know where he got the pen from. I, I assume from Notre Dame. It said, the Notre Dame boy that beat Notre Dame. It said on the pen. And this was back before World War II. So it goes on like this for a while. And in his 30s, World War II is going on. Jack Shavigny joins the Marines and is killed in Iwo Jima. Jack Shavigny, maybe the greatest athlete to ever come out of my high school, greatest football to ever come out of my high school, gets killed in Iwo Jima. What a man, you know? If he didn't, I mean, this guy was so amazing. He fought for us and died. I didn't even know him. I wish someone could have told me about this before I went to my school. My chest would have been twice as big. I mean, just to hear that, I would have, I mean, I would have done anything to hear this story when I was coming up. <clears throat> Jack Shavigny was killed. But this is another legend that's associated with it. His pen ended up in the hands, this is the legend, I don't know if it's true, ended up in the hands, but this is in, uh, it's, it's in Wikipedia, that his pen with his inscription on there ended up in the hands of the Japanese envoy on the USS Missouri when the Japanese were going to sign their uh, sign the surrender pact. So somehow the Japanese envoy got this pen. And isn't that crazy? Jack Shavigny, my high school, lived right down the street from me. Well, before I was born, but lived down the street from me, right near Maywood Park, where all these great men walked and tread. And this guy the most amazing guy and he went to Notre Dame and was the guy who got the touchdown for the Gipper. God, what an amazing man. That's the kind of guy that built this country. God bless you, Jack. God bless you, man. Thanks for doing it. You didn't even know me. Thank you.